the life that God has sent to us and the expectation that he has for the life that he has given to us is that you and I must live by it. Amen. Where it is. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. So we need the Holy Spirit to help us to walk in the path of righteousness. Amen. And some of the things that are light that God has sent our way are not easy to walk by. Love your enemy. Do good to them that hate you and despitefully use you. That you can't do. But when the power of the Holy Spirit is in your life, the person who treats you despitefully, you're willing to give them not only a bottle of water, sister Andrea, but we give them some pineapple juice with it too. <laughs> this is what the power of the Holy Spirit does in us. All right, let me keep going. All right. All right, unless we are daily advancing the exemplification of the active Christian virtues, we will not recognize the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the latter rain. This is serious. So if we are not progressing, when the latter rain is being poured out, we are not going to recognize it, and most of all, it will not fall on us. All right, let me skip that one. So what is the purpose of the early rain? Is to lead us into all truth. And when the Spirit of truth is, when the Holy Spirit has come, according to John 16 and verse 8, it will what? It will lead us into truth. Let me have somebody go there and we find that in the Bible. I want you to see it. John 16 and verse 8. This is from the King James Version. Okay, hold a moment. Let me make sure that all the eyes are on John 16 and verse 8 before you read. We want to see it in the Word of God. All right, when you're there, say amen. If you need more time, just say, have mercy. Amen. Okay. All right, you may read now. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Okay, so that's one of the work he's going to do. Let's look at verse 13 and see what is it that he's doing. How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. To come. So the Spirit, when the Holy Spirit comes, it's going to lead us into what? Truth. All truth. All truth. Not some truth, but all truth. <laughs> And where do we find truth? In the Word of God. So, yes. So we have to come back to the Word of God all the time to find truth. And the Word of God is a body of truth about who? Who is the truth and the way and the life? John 14 and verse 6. So what is it that, the, that Jesus is telling his disciples? When the Holy Spirit is come, he's going to lead you into truth. Which this truth is that you're going to find in, in me. Let me keep going. All right. Uh, let me get back. A thorough repentance. 
So that's what we need in terms of it. Repentance, confession, and forsaken of sin. When we're convicted by the Holy Spirit, we can only but what? Ask for what? Repentance. And this is what Paul, not Paul, Peter, well, in, okay, Peter, as Luke, who captures it in Luke chapter 3 and verse 19, he's saying that we need this. Repent. So repentance, confession, and the forsaking of sin. It will result in perfect surrender of our will to God's will. To a wholehearted obedience to all that God asks us to do. And to gain complete unbroken victory over every besetting sin and to reflect the image of God in us. Amen. That's the person of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. So this is what God will reveal all unconscious sin to us. Here it is. Philippians 3, 14 through 15. God shall reveal evil this unto you. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit is living and working in your life, you can be assured that one of the things, something that it's going to do, it's going to bring to the forefront, the surface, the sins that are in our lives. Would somebody say amen to that? Amen. amen. I like that. So I know what to confess, what to forsake, and what to gain victory over. Amen. So that's what I love. So you see the reason, because I do not know what sin is lurking in my life. Those blind spots, those, those things that I think are okay, but the Holy Spirit is convicting me and showing me, no it's not. You need to gain victory over them. Yeah? 16, 8, we have been there. Pen of inspiration. It is the Holy Spirit that convicts of sin. Nothing else. Nobody else. Not a good argument. Not a dissertation. It is the Holy Spirit that convicts of sin. Therefore, when I do not have the Holy Spirit operating in my life, what will happen? I won't be convicted of sin. And if I don't have conviction of sin, I won't know what to repent of, what to confess, what to forsake. And then, but the person who enjoys that and likes that is a person called Satan because his plan is for me to continue with sin in my life until Christ steps out of the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary and probation closes. Ah, let me keep going. That's Christ's object lesson. Those who, this is Testimonies Volume 4, those who really desire to glorify God will be thankful for the exposure of every idol and every sin that they may see these evils and put them away. Do you see all the things that are written in these little black books? If you haven't been reading them, it might be a good thing to read them. Okay, so here it is. It is in mercy. Amen. It is in what? Mercy. mercy. That the Lord reveals to men the hidden defects of his heart. 
It is in mercy. That God is revealing and convicting me of sin. It is God showing me mercy. We should be happy about that. So every time we are convicted of sin, this is what we need to say. Mr. Pilot, Lord, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for a show of mercy. Let me keep going. Uh, let me skip that. So what do we need to do? 1 Corinthians 11, 28. Let's all take one of these texts. 1 First 11, First Corinthians 11, 28. 2 Corinthians um, 13 and verse 5. Psalm 138 and verse 20. 139 and verse 23. And Psalm 44 and verse 21. Okay, hold for one moment. Uh, how do we want to do it? Do we want to get to all of them okay, first? Second. Okay, she has a first, second. Miss Imani, you have 139. So you have the third. So we have one, two, three, and let's get somebody on this side. And you have and you have number four. Okay, so let me are we there? Okay. First Corinthians 11, 28, and again from the King James Version. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Okay. All right. Let me take them and we summarize them. Yep. Second Corinthians 13 and 5. You guys examine yourself, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own self. Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? Yeah. Psalms 139, verse 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Psalm 44 and verse 21. Psalms 44 verse 21. Will not God make search for it? For he sees the... Secrets of the heart. Okay, thank you. So here it is. These texts are telling us that we need to what? Examine ourselves. And we need God to help us to what? Search our hearts because he knows what? The hidden secrets of our hearts. So we need that. So we need to be engaged in close examination. Those of us who do examination, your doctors, your nurses, your, your uh, accountant. You are constantly examining things closely to make sure that it was right. This is what God is asking us to do. So every follower of Christ should examine himself how frequently? Daily. daily. Not weekly, daily. So I need to know what are those hidden idols in my heart daily so that I can do what? Confess and what? Put them away. All right. Take time for self-examination. Self-examination must be what? Follow. We don't like that part. We like to read the scriptures and we like to pray. True or not true? True. true. But I'm telling you that we need to be what? Doing what? Self-examination. Follow self-examination. Because in the reading of the scriptures, even before we pray, that is the self-examination that is going to help us to have quality of prayer. Are you with me? 
So if I read and the Bible is telling me that I need to be dependent on God, I need to yield my will to Him, and I know that I'm not yielding my will to Him, when I go to pray, what do I need to pray for? God, give me the spirit of yielding my will to you. That's it. All right. All right. I am looking. It's 1247. How much more time? I'm praying for grace. Thank you. All right. So the purpose of the early rain, and I think we have somewhat said that, it is to cleanse us from some of our sins. All, All sins. All sins. So that is a purpose that you and I need at this point in time in that we have gotten the early rain in our lives when we were converted and we accepted Christ as our personal Savior from sin. But that purpose of the rain continuing is to what? Cleanse me and to prepare me to receive the latter rain. Okay. Are we emptying our hearts of all selfishness? Selfishness is the basis on which all sins rest. I steal because I'm selfish. I lie because I'm selfish. I dishonor my parents because I'm selfish. I kill because I'm selfish. These are the things on which sin exists. Selfishness. So we need to be examine our hearts, what? And, and not only examine and to see the selfishness that exists there so that we can put it away. All right. Let me keep going. All right, now is the time when we are to confess and forsake our sins that they may go beforehand to the judgment. And there's a Bible text for that. First Timothy chapter five and verse 23 or 24. There is a, a term. That we send our sins what? Before. Yes, because we don't want to hold on to our sin. Because if we hold on to our sins and we are caught with our sins, what is going to happen? Is that we're going to lose our salvation. And that's what we need to do. Send it on now. All right. So when I have the early rain, the former rain, the first rain operating in my life. What will be the result? All right, let's go to the book of Romans. Romans chapter six, and I won't keep you much longer. Can I take 10 more minutes of your time? Please tell me yes. yes. I plead for 10 more minutes. Yes. Thank you. All right. So Romans chapter 6, let's look at verse 1 and 2. Okay, hold a moment, uh, Miss Indy Ray, here you go. Romans chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin, that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that we are dead to sin live any longer therein? All right. So what, according to verse 2, what is it telling us about when the Holy Spirit comes into our lives? We are not what? Continuing to do what? To live in sin. Not living in sin. That is evidence that the Holy Spirit is working inside of our lives. We're not continuing to sin. Does that mean that we will not make mistakes? No, it doesn't mean that. But I'm not going out to plan to steal. I'm not going out to plan to be disobedient. That is sinning. Are you with me? 
That's what it is. And God wants to give us the victory over that. Amen. So we become dead to sin. Let's look at verse 16. Yes. Know ye not that to whom we yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin or death, or of obedience unto righteousness? All right. So when the power of the Holy Spirit is inside our lives, what is going to happen? We're going to change masters. Yes. Amen. So... Satan is no longer my master, but who is my master? Christ. Jesus Christ. And Jesus becomes my master through the person of the Holy Spirit. See why we have to have Amen. the Holy Spirit? Amen. Okay, let me just give you a few here. Romans 1, 2, and 3. Romans 6 and 7. Freedom from sin. 11 and 12. Sin shall not have dominion over you, verse 14, and sanctified, preserved, blameless. 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 That's what the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives will do. Okay. Preparation. So we need a deep, thorough, wholehearted repentance. That's what we need. By God's grace, living up to all the light that we have while seeking daily by earnest prayer, Bible study, and study of the spirit of prophecy for more light. Amen. Amen. God is not going to give us more light when we have not acted on the light that we have. You're driving from here to Miami and it's dark at night. And if you do not use your headlight to the distance at which it will give you light, what is going to happen? Yeah. So you have to constantly move with the light that is given. You're using the light that you have to get more light. And this is what uh, Ellen White is saying here, or in the summary of it. Seeking complete, continuous, unbroken victory over all besetting sins. And be about our Father's business. Amen. Yeah. All right. Let me skip this. Yes. To the idea of victory over sin. Yes. Testimonies, volume 1, page 144, paragraph 2. We can overcome sin in our lives. Amen. Do you believe that to be true? Amen. We can overcome sin. Amen. But I must let you know that it is not easy because this person or this thing called self, we have to fight it. Every day, the battle has to be constant, and it has to be sure conflict. But if we fight it in the might of Jesus Christ, and with the power of the Holy Spirit, you and I can gain victory over every besetment. Amen. Amen. I believe that to be true. Amen. Amen. And I am seeing God working in my life to make that a reality. Amen. So I'm not talking to you today about something that I have read. I'm talking to you about something that God is doing in my life. And if he's doing it for me, guess what? Amen. We're doing it for you. Amen. We just have to believe and cooperate with him. Amen. Let me run along. So, how do we make this practical? How do we make this practical? You want to know that, Miss Imani, isn't it? How do you make it practical to die to self 
to live in the power of the Holy Spirit every day. How? Let me see if I can find it. So here it is. I saw how this grace could be obtained. This is from uh, messages to young people. Go to your closet. Where are you going? To your closet. To your closet. And there alone plead with God. Create in me a what? A clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit. Be earnest, be sincere. Fervent prayer availeth much. Jacob like wrestle in prayer, agonize. Jesus in the garden, and listen to the red part. Do not leave your closet until you feel strong in God. Amen. When then watch, and just as long as you watch and pray, you can keep these evil besetment and the grace of God and will appear in you. Where's your closet? I've done it. Amen. You have to have a space in your house. Amen. And you go there. And that's where you're wrestling with God. You're talking with God. Bold face talk. Lord, I hate what is inside Gary Walton, and I am not leaving here until you produce a new me. I need victory over this thing. I need the power of the Holy Spirit to do your will. And I need it. We're not being presumptuous, but we're talking confidently, fervent, and earnest. Until we hear and feel that power in us. So we are stepping out, not in my might but in the might and power of Jesus Christ, that when something comes against me, I can step aside or step behind my master, and I can say, Jesus, yes. 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 Hallelujah. fight this for me. Yes. This is how we gain victory over sin. Yes. Let me keep on. All right. Now guard jealously. Your hour of prayer, Bible study, and self examination. If you don't have a time when you're waking up and studying the Word of God, you need to get that time. Carve it out. I'm not talking about if you wake up in the morning and you're not checking your email or checking your text message to see who called you or who texted you, who sent you a smiley or a selfie while you were sleeping. Is that you're waking up to have an encounter with your best friend Jesus Christ. And you're studying that word of God. Wrestling with one passage. Just last week I was, I went back to a basic passage just to study. Genesis 1, 1 and 2. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. You know what that told me? That the God that I serve created time and space. And he called all of this into existence out of nothing. Mm -hmm. And when I look at verse 2, he tells me that the earth was without form and void. And darkness was up on the face of the earth. And the deep and the Holy Spirit what? Moved up on the face of the earth. Amen. And then in verse 3, he tells me that, let there be light. Amen. This is what it is. Amen. The God who created nothing out of, something out of nothing, is able to what? Create in me, Amen. out of my nothingness, something that is good. Amen. That he can garner in and put 
his robe of righteousness on me. Amen. And then, listen to this. I, I'm getting excited. But I know that, oh, now I'm gone over. But I have to tell you this. And then I'm closing. In the book, Reflecting Christ, it's April 3rd. Listen to what is available to us. Are you ready for this? Yes. No, you're not. 